So now we have to make sure all the chemicals in the workplace are properly labeled. Now there's a lot of confusion out there about what actually has to be on the label. So we're gonna break it down by chemical container type. There's three main types of chemical containers. There's shipping containers, there's workplace containers, sometimes called secondary containers, and there's portable containers. So let's look at the labeling requirements for each of these three containers. And the first type of a container is a shipping container. Uh, chemical shipping containers are what the new Global Harmonized Standard regulations apply to when it comes to labeling chemicals. A shipping container is a box that you would load in some chemicals and ship it off to a customer or, a, or receive it from another uh, facility. Shipping containers, they, are, they go in transit. Um, GHS has a lot of specific requirements. There's actually six. They have to have the product identifier, which matches the name on the chemical inventory and the safety data sheet. They need to have the signal word, which is either danger or caution. They need to have the hazard statement, precautionary statements, relevant pictograms as established by GHS, and then the manufacturing contact information. So that's six items, and so it's quite a bit of information. Now, there's probably a good chance that you actually don't have shipping containers at your facility at all. Um, if you go to Home Depot to pick up your chemicals or down to the, the paint supply store, um, there's a good chance that you're not going to have any chemical shipping containers at all at your facility. Uh, sh chemical shipping containers that have those GHS requirements are, like I said, stuff that gets shipped to and from a location. So workplace containers are just the containers that chemicals are in in the workplace. They're sometimes called secondary containers. Now, workplace containers also have to be labeled, and OSHA gives you two options as to what you can put on those labels. The first option is just to use all the information that was on the chemical shipping container, the GHS labels with the six items that we spelled out. Now that's easy to do as far as knowing what needs to go on the label. It can be difficult because it's a lot of information and especially if you have like a small container, it's difficult to get all that information on there. But OSHA gives you another option. They say that you can make a custom labeling system at your facility. Now the only thing that OSHA says that specifically has to be on the label is the product identifier, and that product identifier must match the safety data sheet and the chemical inventory. And then OSHA says you just need other stuff. Now it doesn't actually say other stuff in the regulations. There's a very long and legal statement about what it needs to be, but it's basically saying that you put the product identifier on the label and then enough information on there when combined with that label and the safety data sheets and the training communicates the hazards to the employees. So you can create a custom labeling system. Um, remember back when we were doing the chemical inventory and I said, hey, take a note of what hazard warnings are on those chemicals. And this is why I did that. So if you look at your list and see what all of your chemicals have in common, you can say, all right, this is my labeling system. And then you don't need to go back and relabel all the chemicals. Uh, in my experience, I find that the, the thing that's on just about every single chemical is the uh, product identifier, a hazard statement, first aid, and required personal, protection, personal protective equipment. It's usually on everything. So if you write that up and say, these are the items that are going to be on my custom labeling system, you don't have to go back out there and relabel everything. The only thing you need to do is if you do find some chemicals that are missing one of those items, you're going to need to make a custom label for that one and, aff and affix it to the chemical. But for the most part, you'll be good to go without having to do any additional work or buy any additional labels. Now there is a third type of chemical container in the workplace, and that's what they call portable containers. Now portable containers, provided they meet some very specific requirements, do not actually require labels. A portable container is something that you fill with a chemical, you go off and you use it, and you come back, and you put it back to where you found it. I'm an example of that is filling like a paint tin uh, with paint, uh, filling a spray bottle with some sort of chemical cleaner, and so on. So when you're using a portable container, if the person who is filling the portable container fills it from a properly labeled source and they maintain control of that portable container throughout the entire time that it's being used, it doesn't have to be labeled. However, if that person were to put that container down and walk away from it, they are no longer in control of that container and then it needs to be labeled. Or if they were to take that container and just hand it to somebody else and say, here you go, use this, if it's not, it needs to be labeled, and if it's not, that's a violation. There are a lot of facilities that just make it a policy that everything has to be labeled and they don't allow that exception for portable containers, but it's really up to you. OSHA does allow portable containers to go without labeling as long as they're in control of the person who performed the transfer and it's transferred from a properly labeled source.